um, from doing youth organizing back in the day in a project called the NIA Project um, here in Boston, but continues to work with young people all around the world. And right now is um, been working with young people in Tanzania doing organizing work and training. So it might be some fun stuff there. Um, another sort of reason why we had him come to, to speak at this series um, is because Seth has been thinking about for years, really since undergrad, this question about um, what's the relationship between black Americans and Africans? Simple question, sort of open up. You might hear some of that stuff here. And then hopefully we'll hear some other fun things about music, life, and aesthetics tonight. <laughs> so um, with that, I'll just, we want to open it up to Seth. We might heckle him a little in the front. No, you feel free to. So welcome, welcome. And are you ready, sir? Um, this lights. You want me to turn off something? What do you want? Turn off lights. What are you doing? Oh, thank you. Oh, wait, I forgot to say something. What did you say? What? What did you forget? I forgot to say he is a professor at Trinity College as well, works in two departments, the uh, history and yeah. international departments, yeah. um, and is also an advisor at the International Hip Hop Festival. Yes. Yes. All right. Thank you very, very much. Thank you for having me here. Uh, I wanted to say thank you first to uh, Laurie and Kenny, uh, as well as Najma of the Design Studio. Um, like Najma said, go back to late 1990s when I was an undergraduate at Tufts University and working with youth. And uh, basically, Najma and Trini, uh, Najma and Kenny trained me uh, in youth work. So goes back. Uh, and I feel like I haven't really been back to Boston as much since I left a couple of, uh, 10 years ago, I think. Uh, so um, I'm very happy to be here. And what I'm going to be doing, like Najma said, is that we're going to be, uh, Kenny said too, is that we're going to look at history or we're going to look at the future. And we can't look at the future looking at the past. I'm technically speaking an historian, um, although I feel like, you know, that's neither here nor there. But um, I got into history simply because I was interested in learning more about the black radical tradition, black radical tradition going back to slave trade, even before that, and the types of resistance movements that were taking place all the way for the last 500 years. And I was just interested in learning more about that to inform my own kind of work that I was doing with youth. So I went back to school, and, uh, and now I get a chance to talk about black aesthetics and pop culture. Really, the title should read, From Black Aesthetics to Pop Culture, but it doesn't really matter. At the same time, I'm really going to be talking about black and aesthetics. <laughs> pop, culture, whoops, pop culture is something that I think I'm going to leave uh, open for us to perhaps have a conversation about. But in some ways, this is foundational. Foundational, I think, to the type of dialogue that we're trying to create in the over the next couple of weeks. Um, before I get started, you know, we think about all the time black history. We have this moment in this month of black history. I don't know about you, but for me, it's always a conflicting moment. It's a conflicting moment that starts with King's Day and the ways in which we remember King or the ways in which people tell us to remember King. A King that's kind of locked in a 1963, I have a dream, interracial solidarity, and then King between 63 and 68. Well, we don't really know much about that, right? And then everything else gets placed to the side, puts to the side. It's so the way we think about King is we think about top-down, or top-down leadership. One person, one man, great hero, and it leaves out all the grassroots movements and peoples and struggles that made King, that elevated King to that position. So that's one thing. So every time King's birthday and then into February, it gets a little weird because it's like, you know, is it, are we doing this for the sake of history? Are we doing this for the sake of multiracialism or multiculturalism? You know, so my first question, and I'll take a few answers, very simple, what does Black History mean to you, or Black History Month mean to you, since we're here under this kind of framework of Black History Month? Yes, this is what it's going to be like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> what do people think? What does Black History Month mean to you? It kind, of, kind of like reminds me, it takes me back to like just growing up. A lot of times they would have like you know, programs like at church growing up. You know, just like, you know, highlight certain figures of, of black, you know, history, the Thurgood Marshalls, the Frederick Douglass. Actually, they had a Frederick Douglass tea. Um, when you say that, when I think of the month, it, it kind of conjures up those images of, like, you know, ce celebrating ourselves 
for a small period of time and then kind of going back to business is sure. unusual for sure. the rest of the year. So You hear the joke, went well, 29 days in February. Yeah. What's up with that? Um, <laughs> but nevertheless, anyone else want to share? That's a good year. Black History Month? Significance? Um, my little brother said that uh, I like to quote him because he's a year younger. Um, <laughs> he said, uh, he said us that uh, you know if we think about America as a like a, um, a jazz ensemble, Black History Month is just one month where the other players aren't playing, mm -hmm. and uh, we have to think about it that way so that we can appreciate that particular moment, but then also remember and hear it the rest of the year. Sure, mm -hmm. that, sure. And so this is just solo. Yeah, go ahead, sorry. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. No, it's a good start-off point for me and a point of departure because even in how we're talking about it, is we're using language like allows us to celebrate, allows us to remember. And so it's part of the things, that at least what I do in trying to write about some things around the African-American and African connection is thinking about things like history versus memory, modes of remembering certain uh, 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 moments, modes of remembering certain events, the selection of heroes, that go into what we're calling a, a kind of collective black memory. This is the moment. And so in some ways, we're gonna talk, I'm gonna talk about a historical moment. We're talking about within that historical moment, the ways in which these people were remembering the past in a very particular way. One of the things that's going to help to bring this about is, the, is the, again, is the independence of Africa. One of the only reasons in the, uh, that we in the West have never organized, we have hated our image and our African image. And because Africa has been in the hands of people who have created an image of Africa that's negative and hateful, and uh, it has been hateful to us, we haven't wanted to identify with it. But now that Africa is getting independent and in a position to create its own image, and it's a positive image, uh, those of us in the West look at the African image and see how positive it is, we begin to identify with it. We become proud of, of Africa, and we, we become proud of our African blood, our African heritage. And this is what is beginning to make the... Africans in the Western Hemisphere today have developed more race pride, and as, as this race pride has developed, then it has a tendency to make us want to unite together and work together, and your Western imperialists and colonialists uh, consider this to be a grave. New bridges must be built, because in the minds of the majority of our people today, Africa is too far away. So the only way you and I can point them in that direction is build new bridges. We have to have the type of understanding of Africa and the type of understanding of our people here in order to build a bridge, a contact, a line of communication between the two. And once the lines of communication have been established and our African brothers can, can, can um, stretch forth their hands and reach us, and we can stretch forth our hands and reach them why there's nothing that this blue-eyed man in this country will be able to do to you and me successfully from that 